we are get now going to prove the exponential growth equation. Remember, we started out with the fact that in, in, our, in our previous example, we had B, dp dt equals kp. For the proof, I'm going to use y instead of p, because like I said before, it might not be population. It might be something like the amount in account. For example, a equals pe to the rt represents compound interest formula. So we're just going to use a generic y. So we have dy dt equals ky. Now we're going to divide ky by 1. So now we have two equations. What we're going to do is cross multiply. So we have dy equals dt ky. We're doing this so they can get all the y's by themselves and all the uh, dt's and the k by itself as a constant. We want to move the constants with the t's and the dt's. So next we're going to divide both sides by y. I'll do that with some color here. That way the y's will cancel. And now we have dy over y equals dt ky over y. Whoops, I showed the same step. So now the y's cancel. And now we have um, dy over y equals dt times k. From there, we now have the y's separated from the dt's and the k. We want to rewrite this so that dy over y becomes 1 over y times dy. And we put the k in front of the dt. In other words, we move it to the front. This way we can now integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate the left and integrate the, the right. The integral of 1 over y is natural log of y. And by the way, you can see that this is just basically um, a more former proof of what we did with the rabbit reproduction. I mean, we're basically just making a generic k instead of 1 over 30. And uh, other than that, it's basically the same proof. If you want to go back and look at that proof, in fact, I will look at it right now. Basically, the only thing difference is instead of P, we have Y. And I'll go back to the original, actually. Instead of P, we have Y. And our K, our K is 1 over, uh, our K instead of 1 over 30 is actually uh, just a generic K. So you can see then that the proof is going to be very similar. So anyway, once we integrate the left, we get natural log of y. On the right, the integral of k times dt is kt using the constant multiple rule for antiderivatives. Don't forget your plus c. Okay, and we know that y0, or the initial condition, represents the population at time t. And I, that cut off for some reason, so I'm going to finish spelling that at time t equals 0. So we have y equals y not when t is 0. So y, is, y of 0 just means the initial population or the initial amount. So, so this is an initial condition that we can plug into our formula. So since we had natural log of y is equal to kt plus c, we can plug in y not in for our initial conditions since when t equals 0 y of 0 represents that initial condition. It's just a generic y, y of 0. Um, now, k times, this is k times 0, since we're plugging in 0 for t, so that just becomes 0. So our c value is equal to the natural log of y of 0, or y not. Another way you can represent y of 0 is y not. Now, y not doesn't mean y not, w, h, y, n, o, t. It means the initial y value, and you can put the, the O at the below the zero or the zero. You can put the zero as a subscript. So since natural log y equals kt plus c, we can replace the c with natural log of y not or natural log of y of zero. So now what we're going to do is subtract this from both sides. So we're going to move it over to the left. Now we have natural log of y minus natural log of y sub 0, or y of 0 is equal to kt. Remember that you can combine two logarithms whenever you subtract them. You can actually divide them and put them inside a parentheses. So this is going to become natural log of y over y not, or y of 0 equals kt. I should have really changed that to y not a long time ago, but it's just the initial y value. Now we're going to uh, raise both sides make both sides an exponent of the power of e. 
That way we can cancel the natural log so we can get y by itself. So it looks something like this. e to the natural log of y over y0 is equal to e to the kt. So now we have y over y0 is equal to e to the kt. Finally, what we will do is multiply both sides by y0 or y of 0. And we get y is equal to y0 times e to the kt. So basically, you can just move the y0 to the front there. Commonly written as y equals y0 times e to the kt. So I'm going to write this bigger so all of you can see it. Remember, y0 represents the initial value, uh, the initial y value. k represents the growth factor, and y represents the amount at a given particular point in time. Remember that this is basically the same. This is the same as the compound interest formula. It's deriv derived the same way, where the amount in the account is equal to the principal, or how much you put into the account, times e to the r. So we can see then that r is basically the same as the growth constant, r e to the rt. So a is equals p e to the rt is the same as the formula that we just derived. So we've actually just proven also the formula for compound interest, as well as exponential growth. Now I'll keep in mind that this becomes exponential decay when k is negative. When k is positive, it is exponential growth. Same formula. That's it for this particular example of the simple proof for exponential growth and decay. If you have any other questions about it, let me know.